What's up, PA world? Welcome back to my channel, PA Study Buddy, where we discuss all the high yield information for every class of the didactic here, as well as high yield info for your EOR and PENS exam. So, in today's video, we're going to do 50 high yield rapid review questions for your infectious disease. Uh, exam. So we're going to start with the easiest questions and work our way up. So question number one will be viruses lack which enzymes? So they're going to give you different uh, enzymes and they're going to ask you which one of these uh, the viruses lack and that would be the protein synthesizing enzymes. Number two, bacteria are what kind of cells? So they're going to give you different answers but when it comes to bacteria you should know that they're simple prokaryotic cells no nucleus or organelles. So no nucleus and organelles should make you think of bacteria. Number three, what shape are cocci? The cocci are round. So known different shapes, known different uh, presentations will help you with infectious disease uh, when it comes to selecting the right answer every single time. So if you hear gram-positive cocci in chains, for example, this should make you think of strep. And another uh, advice I can give you guys that significantly helped me in a PA school, especially during uh, testing time, is to create a little mnemonics, create a little stories to help me retain the information. You can create your own, you can use mine, whatever works for you, just get that you know, information down, get through the school, and just keep in mind, it may look super difficult, especially in the first half of the didactic year, but just what I always told myself, my mantra was, thousands and thousands of people have done this before me, so can I, period. So when it gets hard, just know that it's meant to be that way, you're going to be just fine, just keep pushing, B stands for a balance. If you get some A's, that's fantastic, but B will do just fine. So if you hear grain positive cocci in chains, that is strep. And the way I remember this is strep that chain on your belt. Strep chains. Strep that chain on your belt. If you hear grain positive cocci in clusters, so this should make you think of staff. So staff, clusters, strep, chains. When you hear protozoa, this should make you think of parasites. Protozoa are parasites. Number seven. If the question states that protozoa is found in the red blood cells, this is indicative of malaria. So they're going to give you a question stem. They're going to say that protozoa was found in the red blood cells. They're going to list all these different diseases, A, B, C, D, and the malaria is the correct answer. Number eight, strep viridans and the strep bovis can be treated with what? So in the question stem, they may list these in a, you know, lab and culture findings, and they're going to ask you how do you want to treat this, and the treatment is penicillin G. Penicillin G, strep viridans, strep bovis, penicillin G. Number nine, folliculitis is caused by which organism? Folliculitis is caused by Steph Oris, Steph, Oris, Folliculitis. So again, guys, I wish I had something like this when I was going through PA school because I organized all of this high yield information from every class that uh, didactic year had. There's about 4,000 high yield questions like this. They're all nicely organized for you to retain the information, to save your time so you can spend with your loved ones. Scan the barcode. The book is on Amazon. It's only 20 bucks. And it also helped me, guys, grow this channel. Help me spread the word. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about these questions. Let me know what else we can uh, talk about to improve your PA experience. And let's continue. Question number 10. Most common bug causing impedigo, that would be Steph Oris again. So Steph Oris likes to creep around the skin, likes to creep around the bones. So most common bug causing impedigo, Steph Oris. What is impedigo buzzwords? So if you hear honey colored crusted rash on kid's face, you should be thinking impedigo. Honey colored crusted rash, impedigo. How do we treat it? Well, we treat it with a Bactroban 2% ointment, and if it's extensive, we're going to treat it with Caflex. 
So the question stamp is going to tell you this is a honey-colored rash. Uh, they're going to tell you try to treat it with a Baxter band. Didn't work and it's super extensive now. Then that answer is Keflex. Irsipialis is caused by which bug? Irsipialis is caused by group A strep. Gas. Group A strep. Irsipialis. How do we differentiate Irsipialis from cellulitis? Well, the easiest way to see is where is the rash and what does it look like? So Irsipialis will have the well-marked lines and it's superficial, it's on the skin. Whereas cellulitis, it does not have marked lines and it's deeper and both will be hot and both may have fever. So on the surface, Irsipialis, deep, think cellulitis. What is the hallmark feature of MRSA? A hallmark feature of MRSA is an abscess formation. Or they can tell you patient comes in with an abscess, uh, you treated it, and they're going to ask you what is the most likely cause, and the answer will be MRSA. What is cellulitis? So cellulitis, we now know it's a deep uh, tissue infection, and this is subcutaneous and connective tissue infection. 17. The most common bug causing cellulitis. Again, step four is almost like always with infectious disease, unless you know the answer and you're certain. And if you find yourself on the verge, step four is, is a really common culprit for a lot of these infections. Herpes zoster shingles is most contagious when. So this is a easily, uh, so it's another thing that really helped me when I was studying. I would look at each slide. Uh, from the class and ask myself, is there a question here? Can they create a question about any information created like given on this slide? And it will always be the same. What is the most common? What are the side effects? What are the bugs? What are the presentations? Uh, what are the mechanisms of actions or medication and so forth? That's what they're going to test you on. So when it comes to the herpes zoster shingles, and when is the most contagious? They're going to give you different time frames. And it's the most contagious a day before the rash actually appears. So they're going to tell you maybe three days before the rash appears, a day before the rash, a day after, seven days after. The answer is a day before. Painful rash on a face that starts as tingling, but now it's a full-on rash and it's painful. This describes Herpes zoster. So it's the only rash that starts as tingling and develops into the painful, full-on blown rash. What is the sign called that involves the tip of the nose from herpes zoster? So they can give you a stem when uh, the tip of the nose is involved and they're going to name all these different signs and the Hutchinson sign is the correct answer. So they can be creative with different names. So Hutchinson sign is the correct answer. And they can even say, hey, patient has zoster, uh, tingling rash, that turned into a painful rash, now it's on the tip of the nose. What is this patient at risk for? And in that case, the answer is vision loss. How do we treat it? Well, herpes zoster is treated with acyclovir. Acyclovir is an antiviral drug. Number 22, varicella rash starts where? So another thing with the rashes and infectious disease, knowing where the rashes start, knowing how they spread, can significantly help you memorize information and differentiate it on a testing day. So varicella rash will start at the hairline and will spread down. HSV is diagnosed with which smear? So they're going to give you different smears and they're going to ask you which one of these is used to diagnose HSV and that will be the zinc smear. Zinc smear, HSV. What is the most test sensitive test for varicella zoster? So the most sensitive test is PCR. PCR, varicella zoster, most sensitive test. What is the most common virus causing hand, foot, mouth disease? So they're going to tell you this is a kid that comes in with the symptoms indicative of a hand, foot, mouth disease. And they're going to ask you what is the most causative virus, and that would be Coxsackie A virus. Coxsackie A virus. Saki, I just think like sucks. Uh, so hand, foot, mouth disease sucks. So Coxsackie virus. So what's the most common cause of the hand, foot, mouth disease? Well, the hand, foot, mouth disease that, that sucks, Coxsackie virus. 
small domed papules with umbilicated centers should make you think of Malaskus contagiosum. Malaskus contagiosum, small domed papules with umbilicated center. And we treat that by not treating it. It's a self-limiting, it's a pox virus, just leave it alone. Three C's of measles, rubella, cough, corsi, conjunctivitis. If the question stands with the patient's symptoms, talks about patient having a cough, patient having a conjunctivitis, or corsi, this should all lead you to diagnosis of measles. How long does a measles rash last? Answer is seven days. So you see how they can get creative with the question stem and talk about measles rash and how long does it last? One day, three days, seven days, ten days. Answer is seven days. How long does the German measles rash last? Three days. So regular measles, seven days. German measles, three days. Most common virus that causes rubella, German measles. This will be a toga virus. Toga virus, German measles. Toga virus, German measles. Most common organism in acute osteomyelitis. Acute osteomyelitis, you should always think Steph Aureus. Steph Aureus, acute osteomyelitis, all day long. Again, check out a book, guys. I think it's going to be a game changer for you. You're going to see your scores higher. You're going to see more time with your family. So check it out. Let me know what you think. How long will it take for osteomyelitis to be seen on an x-ray? So the best imaging for osteomyelitis is an MRI. In order to be seen on an x-ray, it will take about a month. So MRI is the first choice imaging and it will take four weeks. So again, they can get creative. They can say how long it will take for osteomyelitis to be seen on the x-ray of this patient. They can give you one week, two weeks, four weeks, eight weeks. So four weeks, one month. On an x-ray, MRI is the best choice. Osteomyelitis after puncture wound is caused by which organism? So we know the most common cause of osteomyelitis is stiff ores, unless it's caused after the puncture wound, in which case it's pseudomonas. And a typical stem will see you having a, a runner or somebody who was in the flip-flops, uh, stepped on something and a bacteria from the sole of the shoe got into the bloodstream. So it could be a runner, uh, flip-flops, whatever. Uh, they stepped on something, pseudomonas. Pseudomonas, puncture wound, osteomyelitis. Erythema infectiosum, fifth disease. No oldies. Now all these guys, all, all the six diseases, so it's caused by which virus? So infectious, erythema infectiosum, fifth disease, is caused by parvovirus B19. So the way I remember this, I just threw a 5 in front of B19. I just remember 5B19, 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 fifth disease B19, erythema infectiosum, fifth disease, parvovirus B19. 5B19. What is the buzzwords for erythema infectiosum? So this will be that slap cheek, that lacy reticular rash on extremities, spears, palms, and soles. So they're going to tell the patient comes in, they look like they got that slap cheek rash, a lacy reticular rash on extremities. You know this is a fifth disease, parvo B19. Question number 37. Most common organism causing septic arthritis in children, not adults, children. So that's another thing to pay attention in the, in the questions because they can mix children, adults, and elderly. Sometimes they have different presentations, sometimes different uh, causes. So when it comes to the septic arthritis in children, it is HIV. Hemophilus influenza, HIV. What is the most common organism causing septic arthritis in adults? So in the children, HIV, in adults, it's Neisseria gonorrhea. Neisseria gonorrhea, septic arthritis in adults. What are the four types of T cells? So they can give you different cells and they're going to ask you what are the four types of T cells. And that, that would be helper, 
cytotoxic, suppressor and killer T cells. Helper, cytotoxic, suppressor and a killer T cells. Treatment of choice for strep pharyngitis. So they're going to give you a stem with a strep pharyngitis and they're going to ask you how you want to treat it and answer the penicillin VK. Penicillin VK treats strep pharyngitis. When can a patient with a strep return to school? So in the stem, they're going to tell you a patient comes in with a strep pharyngitis and his mother is asking when can the kid go back to school and the answer is after being on antibiotics for 24 hours. So again, they can get creative with this. They can say immediately uh, after being on antibiotics for 24 hours, after being on antibiotics for 7 days, XYZ. So after being on antibiotics for 24 hours, they're safe to return to school. Most common bug in bacterial sinusitis, and that would be strep pneumo. Strep pneumo bacterial sinusitis. Strep pharyngitis should always be treated for how long? Again, a time question. So they're going to give you different times, but you should know that strep pharyngitis should always be treated for 10 days to prevent rheumatic fever. Or they can say strep pharyngitis should always be treated for 10 days to prevent what? In that case, answer is rheumatic fever. What is the most common bug caused in otitis media? Otitis media is most commonly caused by strep pneumo. Strep pneumo otitis media. How do we treat otitis media? Well, we treat with amoxicillin. That is the first line treatment. Amoxicillin, otitis media. Let's say the patient has penicillin allergy. So in the stem, they're going to say patient comes in, you diagnose otitis media, but the mother reports the patient has penicillin allergy. How would you treat it now? In that case, you're going to treat it with ceftriaxone or ceftonir. So any cephalosporin uh, will do, then I'll enlist one of the answers. So ceftriaxone, ceftonir is the answer of choice. 47. HSV and 2 affect what? HSV-1 affects the eyes and the mouth, and HSV affects genitals. 1 for eye and mouth, 2 for genitals. What is the only bacteria with a cell wall? That will be a mycoplasma. Mycoplasma is the only bacteria with a cell wall. What are the four T's of tetanus? Four T's of tetanus are trismus, lockjaw, tetany, that's your muscle spasm, twitching, and tightness. So they may list tetanus as a causative agent of the whatever symptoms they have, and they may ask you what are the other three. So they may list trismus, and then you got to select tetany, twitching, and tightness. So known all four will help you a lot. Trismus, tetany, twitching, and tightness. And finally, guys, number 50, cat scratch, which bug is involved? So patient comes into the urgent care or emergency room, uh, they report a, a cat scratch, now they're infected, and they're going to ask you what's the most causative agent, and that would be Bartonella. And the way I remember this is a cat named Bar. Bar, first three letters, Bartonella, Bar. You got scratched by the name, you got scratched by a cat named Bar? Who scratched you? Bar did. So Bar, Bar is a cat, scratch, Bartonella. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of the infectious disease. Hopefully you like it. Stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Check out the other videos. And let's go through this PA journey together. Talk to you soon. Bye.